As the vehicle's overall long and narrow design suggests, the B1 was designed to have considerable cross-country capacities, potentially at the cost of maximum speed. Those decisions also reflected on the vehicle's suspension design. It had remained mostly unchanged since the number 101 prototype and Renault mock-up. It used three large bogies mounted on coil springs, which each contained two smaller bogies with two road wheels. Three independent wheels using leaf springs were featured in front of the bogies, and another one at the rear, the purpose of which was track tensioning. A large frontal pulley also assured the track tensioning. This suspension was entirely protected by large side skirts, designed to protect it from mud, firearms and artillery shell splinters. A large central door with an opening radius of 90mm was featured on the center of the B1's right side, while the left side of the hull had a large radiator grille. The B1 used large welded track links. There were 63 individual track links per side. They were 460mm wide. The tracks went all around the hull with large mud guards protecting them along the top. With its design emphasis on trench crossing, the B1 was able to cross a 2.75 meter wide trench or a slope of up to 30 degrees, vertical obstacles up to 0.93 meters in height and forward 1.05 meters without preparation. The B1 mounted the APX1 turret. Designed by the Arsenal de Puteaux from December 1933 onward, this turret was a cast, somewhat cylindrical design, which would be fitted on both the B1 and the D2, and serve as basis for the APX-1 CE and APX-4 mounted on the S-35 and B-1 BIS respectively. This turret was given 40mm of armor on all sides, as the hull. It had a turret ring of 1022mm in diameter. Cast construction was, for the time, an advanced feature, which allowed for some good level of protection and integrity. At the same time, it was expensive and time-consuming to produce, meaning production of cast turrets in general often lagged behind hull production on all French vehicles which used such turrets. A single crewman sat in the turret, the commander. He could observe the battlefield through an unopenable command cupola. The commander entered the tank through the side hatch, as did the other three crew members, but the APX-1 turret featured a hatch at the back, which could be opened and then serve as a seat for the commander looking over the turret. This allowed him to observe the battlefield more efficiently, as well as evacuate the tank if needed. The turret's main gun was a 47mm SA-34 semi-automatic anti-tank gun. It had been designed by APX on the basis of the 47mm model 1902 naval gun. Being L30, it had an average length, though a slow muzzle velocity of 450 to 490 meters per second depending on the shell. The theoretical rate of fire was up to 15 rounds per minute, but in practice in the enclosed environment of a tank and most significantly as all the operation of the gun was done by a single crew member, the commander, the rate of fire was closer to 2-3 to three rounds per minute. The 47mm SA-34 had an L671 telescopic sight, which had a magnification of by 4 and a field of view of 11.25 degrees. It had a V-shaped reticle with adjustable drums up to 1,100 meters for the main gun and 1,600 meters for the coaxial machine gun. It had a good depression of minus 18 degrees and an elevation of plus 18 degrees. Three different shells were standard issue, all 47 by 139 mm rimmed. The anti-tank shell was the Obu de Rupture model 1892G. It was a 1.48 kg projectile with 50 grams of explosives and was fired at 450 meters per second. This shell had fairly mediocre armor piercing capacity, with 31 mm of armor on a straight plate at 100 meters, 23 mm at 500 meters, and 18 mm at 1 km. Two explosive shells existed the 1.25 kg Type D and the 1.41 kg Type B model 1932. The latter, which appears to have been the most common, had a 142 gram explosive charge and was fired at 480 meters per second. 
Secondary armament was provided in the form of a coaxial Mac 31 Type E machine gun, the shorter tank version of the Mac 31 which had been designed for fortification use. It used the new standard French cartridge, the 75 by 54 mm The Mac 31 Type E had a weight of 11.18 kg empty and 18.48 kg with a fully loaded 150 round drum magazine. The machine gun was gas fed and had a maximum cyclic rate of fire of 750 rounds per minute. It had a muzzle velocity of 775 meters per second. This coaxial machine gun had independent elevation from the main gun. 4,807.5 mm rounds were carried within the B1. An original, and arguably quite archaic even for the time accessory which was used alongside the B1, was the Schneider Supply Trailer. This trailer had been developed by Schneider seemingly for the time of the Shah de Bataille, with a prototype already being featured along the SRB prototype in 1924. The idea was to design a trailer which would be towed for the B1. Its main function would be to carry a large quantity of fuel which would be used to extend the range of the B1. Additionally, this trailer could carry tools and spare parts. The prototypes used on the SRB and B1 prototypes even had benches for up to 8 personnel, though this was not used on the final production model used on the B1s. The final version of the Schneider trailer that was used by the operational B1s weighed 1,400 kilograms empty and used two wheels with puncture-proof Michelin tires. It featured vision lights powered by a cable to the B1's rear electric branching. When full, the trailer carried 800 liters of fuel, which extended the B1's range to 21 to 30 hours, instead of the 8 to 10 original hours. The trailer also carried two 100-liter water cans, crates containing cans of various types of oils, such as 30 liters of thick oil, 40 liters of CM oil, and 40 liters of semi-fluid oil. Most notably, one 50-liter can of castor oil used for the nader was carried. The trailer also carried a variety of tools and equipment as well as spare parts from bolts and valves to two track links. It was originally planned to have 10 trailers for each B1 company, with 3 companies existing in total. However, the trailers proved unsatisfactory, as they were very vulnerable and could not be reasonably towed anywhere near combat and abandoned as early as 1936. The lack of a mobile supply of oil and spare parts for the maintenance and fuel-hungry B1s would push the development of the Lorraine 37L tracked and armored supply vehicles as well as their predecessor, the Renault TRC-36. Some trailers appear to have been brought back into operation in 1940 because of the lack of these mobile supply vehicles. The production of the B1 was particularly slow and sluggish, which was to be expected for a new type of tank which was particularly complex and required elements from a large number of different manufacturers. The first serial produced vehicle, number 104 Verdun, would be delivered in December 1935, and the last, number 135 Morvan, in July 1937. As they were delivered, the tanks were also not complete. The turrets were delivered separately, as were the guns. This meant that, for a while, the B1s were used operationally without the 75mm hull gun, with a steel plate replacing the large hull mount. All B1s were fully completed to the serial standard by the start of World War II though. It appears most, if not all, had the 75mm gun by 14th July 1937 for the Bastille Day celebrations. The B1s were delivered to the 511th Combat Tanks Regiment. This regiment was created from the 51st Heavy Tank Battalion, a fame for operating the Super Heavy Shah 2 Cs. The regiment consisted of a company of Shah 2 Cs, as well as a free company battalion of R-35 light tanks and a free company battalion of Shah Bs. The tanks were given the names of French regions or cities, especially cities of Alsace-Lorraine or near France's eastern borders in the latter case. The companies of the 511th Combat Tank Regiment, which operated the B-1s, were the 4th, 5th and 6th companies. The 4th company was comprised of number 102 Armorique, 
number 105 Strasbourg, number 115 Ardennes, number 124 Dauphine, number 125 Provence, number 128 Flanders, number 129 Languedoc, number 133 Nivernais, and number 134 Champagne. The fifth company was comprised of number 106 Metz, number 108 Dixmude, number 112 Mulhaus, number 113 Colmar, number 114 Bretagne, number 120 Franche Comte, number 123 Alps, number 126 Pyrenees, number 130 Ile de France, and number 135 Morvan. The sixth company was comprised of number 103 Lorraine, number 109 Nancy, number 110 Belfort, number 111 Dunkirk, number 116 Normandy, number 117 Vendée, number 118 Auvergne, number 122 Alsace, number 127 Jura, number 131 Touraine, and number 132 Poitou. Number 104 Verdun was the command tank of the regiment's leader, Colonel Bruno. Tanks number 119 Bern, number 121 Bourgogne, and number 107 Rems were kept in reserve. While the B-1 was now in operational service, its use was still very experimental. The B-1 companies of the 511th Combat Tanks Regiment were mostly an experiment in order to prepare for the massive entry in service of the improved model, the B-1 BIS. From 1936 to 1939, the B-1s participated in a number of maneuvers and were also sometimes put at the disposal of other services of the French military for training purposes. The Sudeten Crisis of September 1938 led to the 511th being mobilized and being prepared for combat duties if conflict was to break out with Germany. The regiment was mobilized from 23rd September 1938 to 1st November of the same year, when the regiment was demobilized and came back to normal peacetime operations. The month of August 1939 saw the French army remobilize in a context of renewed international tensions around Poland. On the 20th, soldier leaves were reduced and, on the 22nd, the regiment was mobilized, with officers being called back from permissions. The 511th Regiment was dissolved on 27th August, with its different components becoming new units. The 4th, 5th and 6th companies, which operated the B-1, became the free companies of the 37th Combat Tank Battalion. This battalion, remaining close to the R-35 and FCM-2C that were part of the 511th Regiment, the R-35 equipped 9th Battalion of Combat Tanks, and the FCM-2C equipped 51st Battalion of Combat Tanks, remained part of the Groupe de Bataillon de Shah, No. 511, along with the B-1 equipped 37th Combat Tank Battalion. The service of the B-1 within the 37th would be short though, during the so-called phony war, they were entirely phased out by the more modern B-1 BIS and distributed to various training units. During the phony war, the APX-1 turrets of the B-1s were rearmed with the 47mm SA-35 gun, the same fitted in the S-35 and B-1 BIS. Though only slightly longer than the previous 47mm SA-34 at L-32, the SA-35 offered far superior performances. The 47mm SA-35 used in the APX-1 turret an L762 sight, providing a field of view of 11.82 degrees. The reticle used was first V-shaped, later plus-shaped. The standard issue shells for the 47mm SA-35 were the Obu de Rupture Model 1935 and Obu Explosive Model 1932, both 47 by 193 millimeters. The Obu de Rupture Model 1935 was an armor-piercing capped shell. It weighed 1.62 kilograms and was fired at 660 meters per second. German testing of the shell showed an armor penetration of 40 millimeters at an incidence of 30 degrees and a range of 400 meters. This was far superior to the penetration capacities of the SA-34. The Obu Explosive Model 1932 was a high-explosive shell. It weighed 1.41 kilograms, including 142 grams of explosives, and was fired at a velocity of 590 meters per second. Refitting the B-1 with the SA-35 was a quite simple upgrade, which gave the tank equal anti-tank capability to the B-1 BIS. It appears the vast majority of B-1s were refitted, 
though it is not certain if a couple of vehicles did not undergo this transformation. Within the units which received B1s were two battalions d'instruction de char, tank instruction battalions. These were the 106th and 108th, created on 11th and 10th April 1940 respectively. The 106 received two B1s and a B1 bis, with the 108th receiving three B1s. The 106 received the number 106 Mets and number 113 Colmar, along with a B1 bis number 403 Cresciomon. This unit, as other instruction units, was used to teach the operation of the vehicles to their crews. Having B1s in the instruction units was a very welcome evolution, as these units previously only had FTs which were nowhere near the level of complexity of the B-1 bis the crews would then inherit. The 106 units B-1s were requisitioned to form an operational section of Shah B's on 17th May 1940. This included the Crecy-Aumont and Metz, however the Colmar was at this point unoperational and was awaiting a spare part. It ended up being abandoned. The 108th received three B-1s. Number 102 Armorique, number 107 Rems, and number 108 Dimud. It was dissolved as early as 15th May 1940 with its B1 forming an independent section of tanks, while the FTs formed various protection sections, typically used in second line tasks such as airfield defenses. This B1 section was tasked with defending the town of Charité sur Loire on the River Loire on 15th June 1940. It was hoped to form a solid defensive line behind the river, the largest in France. The REMS was abandoned on 17th June after breakdowns, with its armament being scuttled by the crew. The Dimoud appears to have been lost in combat, but to have suffered minimal damage. The Armorique was also captured by the Germans after being abandoned by its crew, with little damage appearing on the vehicle. 11 B1s were in the hands of the Parc d'Engine Blindé, the armoured vehicles parked during the Campaign of France. This was a maintenance and storage unit. The B1 it had were number 105 Strasbourg, number 114 Bretagne, number 115 Ardennes, number 120 Franche Comte, number 123 Alps, number 124 Dauphine, number 126 Pyrenees, Number 128 Flandre, number 129 Languedoc, number 131 Touraine, and number 135 Morvan. Little is known about what happened to the B1s of the Parc d'Engine de Blindé during the campaign. Photos show a number of them appear to have been engaged during the campaign. Bretagne, Ardennes, and Dauphine were all photographed abandoned with superficial or absent exterior damage, likely victims of breakdowns. The battalion the B1s were originally in at the beginning of the war, the 37th, replaced all of them with the more advanced B1 bis during the phony war. Part of the 1st Division Cuirassé de Reserve, the battalion was heavily engaged in Belgium, losing the vast majority of its B1 bis, up to 23 on a single day on 15th May. The 37th battalion, trounced and cut down to size, was transformed into an independent tank company on 17th May, the 3-37 Ogode Company. This unit had 14 B1 bis as well as 5 B1s that were taken from storage to bolster its numbers. Those 5 tanks were number 104 Verdun, number 112 Mulhouse, number 122 Alsace, number 127 Jura, and number 132 Poitou. The 3-37 was heavily engaged during the campaign. Under the command of General de Latre, it also occasionally left some of its tank with local infantry units in order to give them support. This was the fate of the Mulhouse and Alsace. The Mulhouse was left to the 31st Motorized Chasseur Battalion on 22nd May. The next day it had to be sent back behind the front line in order to be overhauled. The tank appeared again in June of 1940. It was abandoned near Orléans on the 15th of June. The Alsace was given to the 2nd Infantry Division on 31st May, with its further fate unknown as is the case of the Verdun. The Jura was replaced by a B1 bis as early as 20th May, with its further fate unknown. The Poitou was still in the hands of Company Godet in June. On the 17th it suffered some minor breakdowns, and later on the 21st was made entirely inoperable. The crew set the tank alight in order to avoid it being captured intact in the town of Azay-le-Peron. 
The single largest number of B1s to be found in a single unit in 1940 was the 347th Autonomous Tank Company. This unit was created on 17 May 1940 with tanks coming from a variety of different depots and training units. It had 12 B1 tanks, number 103 Lorraine, number 106 Metz, number 109 Nancy, number 1110 Belfort, number 111 Dunkirk, number 116 Normandy, number 117 Vendée, number 118 Auvergne, number 119 Bern, number 121 Bourgogne, number 125 Provence and number 133 Nivernais. This unit was first attached to the 2nd Division Cuirassé de Reserve on 22nd May, then to the 8th Tank Battalion on 28th May. But the mere act of getting the B1s to the front line took down most of the combat force of the company. The old B1s were exhausted by years of operations and trials and were vulnerable to frequent breakdowns, which would often not be repaired as the logistical service of the French army had been put into disarray by the speed of the German advance. When the company was first engaged in combat on 3rd June 1940, it had just three B1s, the others having been abandoned on the way. A commander of a section of the company, Lieutenant Philibaud, concluded that the equipment was broken down or exhausted when it arrived to be engaged. The personnel drove at night and spent the day repairing and maintaining the tanks. The company's service was mostly spent desperately trying to get its tanks operational. Six tanks were in the hands of a company de Chalon in early June 1940 in the forest of Eu. Three of those five tanks were able to be repaired before the German forces overran the area and got out towing the other two as well as a B1 bis of another unit, the Hero. Nancy towed the Hero, Provence the Nivernais and Vendée the Bern. Most tanks were lost in the following days, mostly due to breakdowns. The Dunkirk was destroyed on 6 June 1940. The Vendée fell to a breakdown on 9 June 1940. The crew got out of the tank to try and fix it, but fell under the fire of German motorized vehicles, killing the driver and loader, wounding the radio operator and capturing the commander. Four tanks were lost on 10 June. Free, the Normandy, Bern and Nivernais had been placed at strategic locations which they had to defend, as their engines were no longer operational. When the order to retreat came to the company, they were scuttled by their crews to avoid capture. A fourth tank, the Provence, was hit by German anti-tank guns which set the tank ablaze. The crew bailed out and was captured. Though the exact fate of the other vehicles is unknown, it appears most were abandoned as well and then fell into German hands. A fair number of B1s were captured with little or no damage by German forces during the invasion of France after the armistice of 22nd June 1940. The B1 appears not to have been differentiated from the B1 bis in German service, with both models being designated Panzerkampfwagen B2 740F. The number of B1s used by German troops appears to have been fairly little in comparison to the B1 bis, for the simple reason that the B1 had a much lower production and as such far fewer were captured by German troops. At least one individual B1 is known to have been transformed into a flamethrowing tank by replacing the whole 75mm gun with a flamethrower. This was B1 number 103, the third prototype, manufactured by FCM and upgraded to production standard. Attached to the 296th Infantry Division, the former Lorraine was sent to assault bunkers on the Molotov Line on 26 June 1941. The bunkers attacked had previously been shot at with 88mm guns through the openings before flamethrowing tanks approached under 60 meters to use their main weaponry. The tank formerly known as Lorraine was destroyed by Soviet anti-tank fire during this attack. It is reported that another B-1 flamethrowing tank was also destroyed on the same day, though whether it was a B-1 or B-1 bis is not known. A single of the 35 produced B-1s has been preserved to this day. Which vehicle it is is not exactly known, though it has been referred to as chassis number 21, which may suggest that it was B-1 number 121 Bourgogne. This tank was for a long time at the Fort de Seclin, in a poor, rusted and degraded state. It was taken by the Association for Saving of Historical Military Heritage. The turret appears to have been restored, but the hull has not. 
differentiating the B1 from its later much more common evolution, the B1 bis, can be somewhat of a hard task. When looking at photos of B1s pre-1940, the difference is particularly easy to make. The B1s feature the SA-34, a shorter gun with a recoil cylinder, while the B1 bis feature the longer and cylinderless SA-35. However, as the B1s were refitted with the SA-35 during the phoning war, identifying them becomes a much harder task. Some elements can still give it away, but they are typically quite dependent from the angle on which the tank is viewed. The tracks on the B1 bis were wider than on the B1, with 500mm for the bis and 460mm for the base model. This, however, is typically quite hard to see. Easier to differentiate is that the mount for the 75mm gun, as well as driver's post, are a lot more distinct from the rest of the front plates in the B1 than in the B1 bis mostly as a consequence of the armor being thickened on the BIS model. The turrets of the B1 and B1 BIS, while mostly similar, can also be differentiated. The B1 BIS used the APX4 turret, which mostly was the B1's APX1 up armored to 16mm, but the vision slots on the side of the turret were quite different. On the APX1, they stick out from the turret a lot more than on the APX4, where they appear as little more than small slots. Some other differences also exist, but can typically only be used to differentiate the tank from specific angles. For example, the B1 features a larger rear tow hook in order to tow the Schneider supply trailer, and it appears the tender wheel is very slightly lower and further back on the B1 bis, though this is only a question of centimeters. The B1 is a tank which went through a particularly long design process, which arguably began as early as 1921 with the Shah de Bataille, with the B1 itself starting to take shape toward the mid to late 1920s. Due to a long design and correction process, the vehicle would enter service in late 1935-1936. By 1940 though, the B1 was outclassed by its own evolution, the B1 bis, which featured better armor and, as they were far more recently produced, were not as mechanically worn out as the older vehicles. More vulnerable to both anti-tank weaponry and breakdowns, the tank's service in the campaign of France was mostly disastrous, with the B1 being sent in small numbers in desperate attempts to turn back the German tide. Most were knocked out not by enemy firepower, but by the breakdowns of their own engines and transmissions used for years of operations. The B1 also had only very limited service beyond 1940. In general, the vehicle is far overshadowed by its evolution, the B1 bis in popular memory.